Hi guys, um, welcome to another session of Null Daily webinars. So um, I'm sorry, I apologize for uh, the delay. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, um, a speaker was getting ready in getting all the things prepped up. So uh, for today's webinar, we have a very um, a good friend of ours, Arun Mane. Um, he has been a regular and he is a well-known figure in Indian Infosec space. So uh, without more ado, let me just pull him up on screen. Hey, hi. Hi, Arun. How are you? Good, good, good. How about you? Yeah, doing good. So yeah, um, uh, so I guess all the things are set from your end. Absolutely, absolutely. So yes, so Arun will be speaking about um, the, and he'll be speaking about the uh, basic of uh, hardware security 101. And uh, yeah, all the comments and all, uh, so we will be taking up at the end of the webinar. So you can just pop them up on the comment section. So uh, we will be going through them one by one. And uh, Arun will be taking up all the um, questions at the end. Is that correct, Arun? Yes, absolutely. So am I, am I audible correctly? Is there any disturbance from my end? See, I can hear you properly. I guess uh, if anyone, if any of the uh, people who are listening to this webinar, if they can just comment here, if they're able to hear properly, then we can start off with them. In the meanwhile, Arun, you can uh, share your screen. So guys, are we audible? So are, uh, I guess everyone, like you are able to hear us properly, correct? I guess the answer is yes. And okay so yeah um you can so i'll share the screen i believe it's shared right yeah, yeah. yes it's shared uh you can just start off with the uh your like we can see yeah so Stand. is it visible now yes it is visible okay absolutely so oh, yeah. uh yes my name is arun mane uh you can uh, you can uh, aka root killer you can say that okay so today's topic is like uh, hardware security testing 101 so uh, we we are going to talk about the hardware stuff then we talk about the uh, how we can go for you know uh, uh, how to conduct these kind of testing on the particular pcb board actually in that case or other you can say the embedded systems so let me introduce myself my name is arun mane and uh, i'm a Founder and director of uh, Aminasig Labs. So it's a startup, and uh, we mainly deal in uh, the hardware testing, in vehicle, IoT devices, ICS industrial control system like PLC and other stuff, and uh, itself IoT devices as well. So vehicle in that sense, we we test uh, the ECU, uh, CAN bus, and any uh, kind of buses they used like a uh, uh, flex ray or other uh, link protocol or other canvas we do those kind of stuff uh, i'm also speaker and trainer in a, a, a couple not couple of it's a, it's a many uh, conferences uh, and uh, we recently going to launch online training in the uh, in this field uh, in the next month so stay tuned for us actually so we can uh, definitely come up with a, a you know, good uh, uh, trainings as well, so which is um, uh, which, which which can you know uh, delivered in a, uh, those those uh, uh, you can say th those uh, trainings actually you can see it in uh, the uh, many conferences. Okay, uh, it's it's the first time I'm uh, going to give <laughs> a little bit nervous, but. Uh, it's, it's the first time I'm uh, doing live session actually. So you can reach me on uh, Twitter like root killer and uh, the uh, my email ID is uh, air. Uh, you can see over there. Yeah. Uh, let's start our presentation. So what exactly the embedded system actually embedded? If you talk about the embedded system, uh, the we think about the entire you know ecosystems. So ecosystem is nothing but it's connect with uh, the external communication like uh, Wi-Fi or BLE or uh, you know other uh, communication devices uh, or other uh, uh, it could be a M to M communication as well in that case. So these embedded system you can see in the uh, 
different verticals. The, when I say verticals, like uh, IoT devices, IoT devices like your uh, smart health watch, or uh, other, uh, don't say uh, any which device can sit in the your home, like uh, the uh, you can control your lights you can, uh, with the help of home automation devices. So this nothing but comes in the IoT uh, devices. Uh, another example, you can say the smart locks in that case. So these smart locks can work on the Bluetooth, Zigbee, or other you can say the RFID access, right? So these kind of things is called as IoT devices. Same embedded system you can see in the car and vehicle as well. So in, if you talk about the car and vehicle uh, devices like FMS, uh, like fleet management systems or other ECU in that case, Right, electronic control unit. You can say that even the uh, devices like key fobs, right? So there are some third-party key fobs in the market available. There are some devices, key fobs, any other things, telematic devices, uh, which can control over uh, through uh, through the cloud as well as the from your mobile applications. So that that thing you can say that uh, comes in the embedded system actually. Uh, there, there may be from these devices from uh, in automotive sector. These devices may from may come from the tier one, tier two, rather OEM, uh, rather third party. Medical devices, yes, there are a lot of medical devices available in the market, like uh, 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 like the health monitoring system or the ECG or other big devices which uh, uh, can use connected with your hospital or connected with your mobile as well. So you can monitor your entire health, uh, uh, you know, uh, related uh, testing. Uh, you can do with the help of the mobile as well. So that means that particular device is connected with your uh, mobile application or the BLE, uh, BLE communication, Bluetooth communication in that case. Embedded device can also be in the industrial control systems like PLC or the RTU, ID, intelligent electronic device, you can say that, or other sensors. So if you know the distributor control systems has different kind of layers like uh, layer zero, layer one, layer two, or layer three and four and five. So depending on the layer two and three is mostly comes into the OT part, nothing but called as operation technology. So in that case, the uh, level one and level two would be uh, uh, the PLC communications, SCADA communications, right? So in that case, Modbus, DNP3, IC61850, that can, kind of protocol they use, right? So these PLC stocks with a SCADA. And uh, in that case, the embedded uh, device comes into the uh, the kind of the PLC or rather ITU or other any converter like protocol converter. We, can, we call it as a coupler, right? From Modbus to DNP3 or serial to Modbus communications in that case. Again, these embedded device comes in telco devices, like telco devices like, uh, uh, again, telematic device, you can say that, or other any uh, uh, the devices like panic devices, uh, which comes in the healthcare as well. That means telco comes with a SIM card or rather embedded SIMs uh, you can see it on the uh, in the uh, PL, uh, PLCs, uh, sorry, printer circuit boards, right? So, so that these these comes in the telco devices. Even your mobile is a telco device, right? So, even it's a end user equipment, but you you can say that, right? So, mobile hacking is one of the culture nowadays. They they do some sort of uh, basement fuzzing or other baseband exploits. You can see in the uh, different conferences uh, if you uh, uh, search related to baseband fuzzing or something like that. So this is how the embedded system covers in the holistic uh, uh, approach uh, to the humankind, right? So for different different. So if you say that embedded system and embedded devices or the systems are everywhere and you can see everywhere actually. So what are the security issues related to these uh, uh, embedded devices? It's publicly accessible. Yes, it's it's you can say that in, it's in SCADA or other uh, most of the times, uh, even in the cameras, uh, rather UIP devices are the publicly accessible. So that could be the possibility that attacker knows some sort of backdoor 
uh, sorry, the vulnerability, it can easily access that, uh, 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 it can hold the uh, access on the particular device. Even uh, due to some market, like uh, everybody comes, uh, want to come in the uh, uh, world, uh, or rather you can say they, they want to launch their uh, device uh, first actually, so, so everyone can, uh, uh, purchase that particular uh, device. So in that case, they, they miss out all the security aspect. So there would be possibility that if you know uh, the device and they, they can have a, uh, if you do some sort of research, you will find backdoor access uh, in the firmware or other in the device itself. You can find the hard-coded credentials when they talk to each other or other they communicate with uh, any external communication. So, so in that case, in the storage itself, uh, on the uh, on the PCB board itself, you can find the hard-coded credentials. Or uh, rather, you can say embedded systems. A lot of time, this comes with uh, uh, you can say the very minimalistic uh, Linux um, machine inside, which uh, box. You can say that. And you can find the hard coded credential in that, uh, in, in this case. So they have some sort of crypto issues as well. So uh, some smart people comes with a, you know, smart developer, they come up with a cryptography communication, cryptic communication, you can say. So they implement ASP uh, kind of thing, or rather they may uh, have come with a proprietary algorithm. So there are different uh, attacks, vector, attack vectors, you can say that, or other you can say uh, there are different kind of uh, methodology, advanced technique. You can extract those EST from the, uh, the hardware itself. Though it's a very advanced stuff, but yes, there are ways to extract EST as well. Or other you can say you can bypass those signing mechanism inside the bootloader as well. So with the help of different techniques like fault injection or other side channel analysis, uh, mostly the fault injection, but uh, extracting uh, or the deducing ASP from the uh, uh, microcontroller with the different techniques called as uh, the side channel analysis. Yes, so embedded devices most of the times comes with the web applications. They have some sort of very small web application uh, uh, running in the embedded devices. So this web application is not foolproof so, uh, uh, for the security. So there are a lot of issues you can find in the web application itself, like uh, your router in that case. The home router, it may affect it with a lot of vulnerabilities related to web applications. So there are a number of uh, security issues you can find in this thing. So how? Uh, if you know the security issues in the past, uh, you know, five, six, seven years, so so there would be a, some uh, uh, challenge. There would be some challenge how we can rectify those uh, uh, vulnerability or other how we can find uh, those vulnerability in the in this ecosystem or embedded ecosystems. So there there is a uh, approach uh, to you know test these kind of embedded devices. So we call it as embedded ecosystem security testing, actually. So we uh, uh, took an approach, a holistic approach to you know, conduct uh, the entire penetration testing, you can say in that case, uh, uh, of the, you know, the embedded ecosystem. So when it comes to the embedded uh, ecosystem, it comes with the web application first, because these devices are communicate with your uh, uh, mobile application that means through the cloud, through the your uh, BLE communication or other Wi-Fi. <clears throat> Sorry. So, so in that case, we have to approach. Uh, we should have approach with the web application or other. We need to test uh, the cloud services as well. In that case, so we, you need to follow the uh, the security uh, cloud security standards or other OAPs top ten. Uh, web application standards. When it comes to the mobile, again, these mobiles are very, uh, mobile application are very vulnerable in that case. So you need to find out uh, uh, those vulnerabilities embedded in the uh, mobile application itself. So so you can follow mobile uh, OAPs, uh, mobile top tens, you can say in that case. So you can follow those application, mobile applications, nothing but iOS or other uh, uh, Android applications. So uh, 
in this case uh, there are some libraries they used in the mobile applications they can be vulnerable with the uh, with the embedded device itself or the BLE communication or rather you can say over the MQTT protocol. So mainly MQTT protocol stops between the uh, the embedded device and uh, the cloud itself. So uh, or the or the you can say the GPRS or the 2G or 3G. So let's take an example of uh, you can say fleet management systems. Most of the times in the fleet management systems, they use MQTT protocol. So, so they send the locations, they send everything, whatever, like the data, what we, uh, what they gather from the vehicle environment uh, related to the, the driving speed and everything. So they send it, uh, even the fuel uh, uh, capacity. So they send it to the cloud with the help of MQTT protocol. So cloud may be AWS or Jure or other, you can say Kubernetes, they are uh, coming into the picture as of now. So so these kind of uh, testing you can follow uh, with uh, in uh, as we talk about the mobile application as well. For external communication, this 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 is like a mainly deal with uh, uh, the embedded device. So BLE, uh, uh, when we talk about the embedded uh, device testing, uh, we categorize like external communication with respect to the embedded device. So uh, uh, the uh, ex external communication like BLE, Bluetooth, uh, low energy, or other you can say Wi-Fi, or other Zigbee, or L LoRa protocol in that case. So we first analyze the, these kind of uh, you know protocols. Then we coming into the internal part of the uh, hardware device. So once we complete the entire BLE, Wi-Fi, like web application, then mobile application, then comes to the external communication like BLE, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, and LoRa, or other any uh, sort of serial communication in that case, or other USB, the device has a USB connection, so you can test those USB as well. So these kind of uh, 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 testing methodology we use. After that, we test hardware. So here is a, our main topic over here. So uh, the hardware testing, hardware security testing. So here we uh, let's let's see in the next uh, slides only. So this is what we we are trying to uh, understand. What are the steps you can uh, take to test the hardware uh, 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 hardware security testing actually in the in the hardware security testing. First is you need to do a PCB reverse engineering. In that case. We try to find out how the PCB uh, device looks like. What are the components on the uh, uh, on the on the uh, uh, PCB board itself? Uh, print uh, PCB boards in uh, printer circuit boards in that case. So uh, then we try to find out the interface pads, test pad, uh, these kind of uh, interface. We try to examine. Uh, rather, we try to understand what are these kind of uh, uh, what are kind of resistors, or rather you can say capacitor, how it looks and how it works you know, on the on the particular PCB uh, reverse engineering. I'm not going in depth actually as of now on the PCB reverse engineering, so it's a huge topic actually when it comes to the and teaching part. So then after once we understand what exactly the PCB board, when we go for the component component identification, component identification, like you need to find out the name of the chipset actually. So uh, integrated circuits in that case. So micro microcontroller, then uh, some NAS uh, in that case, uh, uh, the storage in that case, we can say that. So like a double AP ROMs or, or rather any bus kind of storage are there. So, so we can try to find out this kind of uh, identification or other, try to find out the component identification. Once we understood the name of the, the particular components, and then we go for the da analyzing data sheet. We try to find out these uh, data sheet related to particular component and we'll, we'll get the entire idea of how the the particular particular microcontroller or storage works. So in the data sheet, you'll find a ton of things like the application of the particular chipset. So you can figure out what exactly they how they works and what criteria that particular uh, 
uh, the storage or other my controller comes in like is it work for fms is it work for the radio some uh, same like rather that particular microcontroller specifically works for usb connections right so in that case you will find the uh, information in the data sheet as well as the you can find out the memory maps in that case so you will find these are the uh, memory addresses is used for these uh, inputs and outputs and uh, the sram and the uh, different kind of some uh, memory maps and they are located to each other so you can you can find these you can we can uh, 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 you know we can go for identify uh, once we have the access over the microcontroller you, you can you can extract uh, the data from the uh, particular memory addresses right so again uh, in the data sheet you will find the uh, the particular chipset it works for how, how much uh, voltage it requires like 3.3 volts or 5 volts that is really crucial part actually when it comes to the hardware testing so we should know about the how uh, the chipset or the microcontroller works or how many uh, how much the you know voltage it requires to run the entire uh, uh, the pcb board actually so this kind of information you can find even the uh, read and write commands specifically to the chipset you can find in data sheet as well so it's really important for uh, the for the hardware security guys and even the uh, the embedded programmers then after that once we understood the chipset pcb board and the component identification then we analyze the data sheet we will we'll try to intercept the communication between the uh, the microcontroller and the spi or the right to see what's going on between this uh, we try to find out uh, with the help of, uh, we try to find out board reads again with the help of uh, the logic analyzer so cellular logic, uh, logic analyzer is one of the good uh device you can say in the market like if you use it seem like uh, if i compare with it uh, stuff so it seem like a wire shark in that case so wire shark is nothing but we try to access the all packets and how it works and how, uh, how what's the communication happening between the two uh, machines right so here it's like same thing over the uh, the serial bus or the spi is nothing but bus i2c also is bus so in, we are, you are going to intercept the uh, bus communication with the help of sally logic analyzer so we'll come to know what are the important data is communicating from uh, one end uh, microcontroller to to spi rather it is it's really help to reverse engineer the entire communication as well in that case so after that once we understand the communication and other parts we try to uh, uh, try to dump the uh, data from uh, the spi or other right to see or other nand chips right so nand storage also nv storage so nv ram so we we try try to dump the data from this chipset and once we are uh, dump the entire chipset uh, and have data from the chipsets we try to do a data analysis like with the help of uh, you can say bin walk or with the help of uh, some reverse engineering technique we try to find out the what's the data inside the uh, uh, the spi or other storage so most of the time there would be possibility that uh, you will get the firmwares from there itself so firmwares so then you can find uh, the uh, minimalistic linux uh, file systems so you'll get this all the idea inside like uh, what are the peer uh, if it is shadow files so if it is pass wd or other any services running it's uh, rather uh, like i said previously so there, there would be a hard coded or a backdoor uh, credentials are there or the backdoor links are there so you can find those kind of things. so uh, in the embedded system it comes with the two parts nowadays it's a bare metal programming uh, embedded programming and it comes with uh, the embedded device with a linux uh, flavor so bare metal programming that would be possibility that that particular uh, chipsets it's communicate with your uh, the wifi right so in that case there are lot of possibilities are there in I, uh, spr and the right to see this they store your wifi passwords right wifi settings or uh, uh, credentials as well so you can dump that those kind of credentials uh, from the storage itself then after comes uh, the advanced 
uh, thing like a fault injection so before that there would be possibility before uh, the fault injection there would be possibility you can uh, interact with uart communication so there would be possibility there uh, there is no authentication while uh, accessing a serial communication uh, or the uart communication so uh, you can get a direct shell from the uh, the linux itself the minimalistic linux or rather they ask for the credentials as well so that can be a possible uh, there would be a jtag uh, communication so if you try to find out the jtag interface or the pinouts so you can use open ocd uh, the debugger so you can with the help of hardware and the ocd debuggers you can connect you can talk over directly the uh, mcu microcontroller in that case and you can dump the firmware out of it or other you can change a lot of stuff like kernel patching or other stuff as well so you can bypass the uh, the credentials or other authentication or the uart communications that would be possible so as i said uh, on the uart communication there would be possibility you can get the credentials uh, the it will ask for the credential for uh, linux credentials so fault injection is a nothing but kind of uh, the advanced technique where we inject a fault voltage or glick or there are different kind of faults uh, uh, technique available uh, 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 in the thesis actually so if you uh, go through the fault injection thesis uh, uh, phd guys they they did a lot of great job in the fault injection and sand channel analysis actually so if you do those fault injection you can bypass uh, the uh, bootloader signing or other you can bypass directly uh, the uh, you can you can shift your console directly to the uh, busy box console so with the help of fault injection so there are different methods to do that actually even side channel analysis let's say the entire communication firmware or uh, um, there would be a two type of bootloader primary and secondary so primary uh, let's say there would uh, let's say there is a case like uh, the uh, the security researcher or the attacker they modify bootloader and again they you know flash it on the uh, embedded device so you can see that malicious uh, firmware can run in the device itself so in that case some are people come with a bootloader they identify first a primary bootloader and with the help of primary bootloader they identify the legitimate secondary bootloader which is directly talk with the application At application nothing but we talking about the firmware itself so these are the mechanism in that case they sign uh, uh, these bootloaders with the help of ask or other uh, different algorithm they use so to deduce these kind of algorithms they the attacker can use side channel analysis uh, technique so to deduce the entire communication so side channel analysis in a, uh, acoustic you can say with the help of acoustic they can deduce uh, the uh, ask with the help of electromagnetic induction so they intercept the electromagnetic magnetic waves and they try to find out the uh, what's the ask inside it or other power uh, analysis uh, uh, you can uh, you can do some sort of uh, the side channel so these are the high end uh, uh, attacks you can say that but in 101 you can say you can do it uh, up to data analysis uh, of dump data actually so these are the 101s but when it comes to fault injection side channel analysis it comes in uh, advanced topics so let's see uh, we have uh, the product called as split management systems so uh, 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 i think so okay so we have uh, other product as well so let me let me uh, let let's see that what split management system first so split management system is a device where communicate Uh, or the uh, gsm or the gprs or the 2g uh, 3g or 4g you can say and uh, and they com- communicate over, again it's communicate over the cloud itself manufacturer cloud or the third party cloud and uh, they have system called a gps positioning 
so gps positioning is that it track the satellite and the the uh, triangulate the entire exact uh, location and send it to the gprs and the user like me and you uh, they use mobile application and they or the mobile application you can track your vehicle right so fleet management system is specifically used for cars vehicles trucks and uh, other stuff so for that purpose they use even in the ship you can see these kind of devices fleet management system in the uh, they want to triangulate or rather they want to pos- get the position exact position of the ship in the ocean so for that purpose they use fms so uh, uh, it, uh, let's talk about uh, the uh, hardware vulnerability in that case so you can see in the screenshot over here so this is the uh, bin bound uh, spi chipset and uh, uh, let's do it in practical actually so uh, let me pull out the cameras and everything uh, okay so now i'm uh, uh, instead of fleet management i'm using uh, the uh, one of the router actually so uh, because we want to extract the data right so let me check okay yes i believe uh, is it is it visible uh, let me know the comment section uh yes i don't was visible uh this one uh, the uh, device yes that's correct it's visible yeah okay so the uh, i check uh okay okay let me this my one Uh, okay. You do that. Uh, do one thing in my part. There will be bad media rega. Bad media cable rega. Just a little bit. okay so for as of now we can see this is the the, the router uh, it's nothing but repeater actually it's as a ethernet cable and uh, our aim is to find out the the chipset so if you see close enough the, these are the spi uh, chipset okay it's again wind bound i believe yes it's a wind bound right so this is the thing you can see that and uh, uh, these are the different kind of components uh, as of now in demo we try to extract the data from this chipset actually so let's do that and for that purpose we use the test clips uh, test clips so here you can see these are test clips in the test clip itself it's a it's a red wire very thin uh, wire and uh, and we are using the this uh, the uh, ch341a and this is connected with this Uh, interface with the help of this testing clip. So uh, sometimes what happened? Uh, you uh, earlier what we do actually we we use very small test test clips you can say and we connect this interface. Uh, we call it as a leads, right? S O I C eight. Uh, that means they have four and four lead. That means eight leads you can say. 
and we connect over here and uh, uh, with the help of this device this device we can connect over the Linux machine and try to extract it. But nowadays there are testing clips are there. Uh, so we need to find out uh, 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 we need to find out these test clips in the market. Uh, you can easily find out in the Amazon itself. And even this debugger also you can find it on the Amazon itself. Uh, it's cost around uh, 800 rupees and this cost around maybe 1200 rupees or other three or four hundred rupees depending on where you are actually buying it. if you are going in the if you are in pune or other in mumbai or delhi so you will find uh, in the even in the electron uh, in the bangalore it will you will find the electronic uh, uh, gadget or uh, other stores you can say where you can uh, find those kind of clips as of easily as of now okay so in the here so uh, in that case so there would be a very small dot here upside so that dot is uh, uh, call it as a number one pin actually from there so red red uh, uh, wire indicates the number one pin so let's see i am just trying to attach this device okay and here you can see. I believe. It's a little bit uh, hard to connect. Let me check whether it's connected properly. You can see the light is blinking. That means, oh, okay. Wait. Okay. I believe it's connected. Okay. Now it's connected. You can see the lights are coming that means it's getting uh, 5 volt or other 3.3 volt from this debugger and it pass it on the this particular pcb board and uh, it supplies 3.3 volt and it's boot up right so let's see it's very hot over here i believe you can see the my linux machine uh, uh, Pratul, is it possible you can see my screen? Pratul? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, thanks. So, can you bring my charger? Uh, okay. So, my this thing, this device, it's connected with my uh, machine. And you can see over here, it's a CH341A, as I said over here. These are the CH341A. Uh, let's see. There is a command called a splash ROM. Okay. We need to use a sudo. Then hyphen P. Uh, let's say uh, what are the options are there? So you will see the these are the operation uh, options. So p hyphen p is nothing but uh, we need to use programmer. So you can see over here, this is uh, the ch three four one a SPI, right? So for the SPI purpose, we need to uh, use this 
uh, CH3 porone SPL. So let's see hyphen P CH3 411A underscore STI and hyphen R hyphen R is for to read the entire communication, right? Entire uh, data or other chipset. So let's say I will uh, uh, say test dot bin. Okay. One CH three four. Okay. Three four one. Okay. okay. So to try to find out. Uh, could not figure out the stream interface. Okay. So that exactly happened. Uh, Let me disconnect and connect to one seven. Okay, USB, USB, it's there. Okay, so it's try to reading the entire uh, chipset as of now. So chipset is the W25Q32. This is the name of the chipset. And if you search this chipset, you will find uh, these thing is nothing but SPI chipset. OK, so we'll wait for you can see over here. OK, so you can this is connected with uh, this CH341A. And as of now, it's dumping the data from the SPI. So here, uh, let's wait for something, some time. It's uh, nothing but 4 KB, that is 4,000 KB is nothing but 4 MB uh, uh, storage inside the inside the device. And uh, once we, uh, you know, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, go for, uh, let's go further. Once we identify the chipset, we use uh, the this. This is the nothing but uh, the uh, CH. Uh, this is OBD2 device, and uh, this is the CH341A and the testing clip. And we attach over there, and we extracted the dumb data. And if you use string commands, you will find those kind of information. So here you can see this is the cloud, uh, uh, rather not exactly the cloud. But uh, the device fetch the uh, firmware from the particular web applications or other. So if you do some sort of uh, the Nmap or particular uh, the you can say the URL, you'll find uh, the FTP FT, FTP uh, is open. So we go over there. We found all the binaries with respect to the TCO and other uh, transmission control, not a transmission, it's telematic control unit. And again, we uh, again we actually dump the binary file. These are the binary file, uh, nothing but they use for over the air uh, uh, or the air firmware update. So for that purpose, they use this link. So again, we. Uh, use binwalk to extract the entire data, and then we found some username and password over here uh, in the firmware itself, and we ca we can authenticate in the uh, other devices as well. So here we still we are getting ready actually. I don't know why it's getting so time. It's supposed to be read very fast. Ah, it's done. Okay. 
it's done. Let's say uh, we have s dot bin over here. I believe I have bin walk. Okay, I don't have bin walk. So let's say bin walk. Uh, let's say uh, okay. Do a b d let's do what ah, just I'm installing bin walk so we need two minutes to install bin walk okay Okay, I believe it's completed. So then let's use sudo then walk hyphen M E uh, and uh, okay and test. Okay, let's do this. So it will extract everything. I'm not going in detail uh, about the entire logs because we have time constraints. So you can see over here the extracted file you can see over here so test extracted file you'll find this is the data which is extracted right that is called as the squash fs root directory let's say squash uh, fs root boom you can see these file systems right so let's say etc. Uh, okay, we mistakenly went over there. Cd etc. Pass wd. You can say you can see the shadow file as well. Wow. Uh, let's do cat shadow file. This is the hash. Right. So if you have the direct. Uh, you know, access over the this router, nothing but repeaters, and you can get the direct access. And if you decrypt, uh, if you uh, get the login credential over here, so you can use and you can get the uh, you can say root access, right? Same, we can check for pass wd. Uh, it's, I think so, it's symlink actually. Let it be. So, we are not going in the I don't know. I'm just being crazy. Right? Let's see. Okay, so it's symbolic. Okay, anyways, so you got the point, right? So what we did over here, it's like we have the embedded device and we have the debugger with test clip and we extracted the entire data uh, from the storage, like SPI storage. And and over here, like uh, here, you will find the exact uh, you can say uh, the file what we extracted. We use bin walk over here. See, so this is this is like uh, uh, the one on one kind of stuff where you can do some sort of you know extracting the data from it. There would be a lot of possibility that you can reflash it there would be possibilities that you can modify some changes you can do some sort of changes in the uh, if it is uh, 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 the telnet is not running so you can uh, run uh, rather you can say you can make changes in the file itself and reflash uh, in the device itself and you will get the uh, telnet is running so there are some lot of methods a lot of changes uh, you need to do in the in, in that case so that's what we do and uh, let's come to the our slide so we understood the hardware stuff right so what happened the embedded device has external communications right let's say we have gps right so the telematic device in that case this device has uh, the gps enabled device right uh, you can keep in the uh, the, you can keep this device 
in the car and you can track the location of the car right so let's say we we will will uh, have some uh, hypothetical situation that uh, i'm the uh, i would, would like to steal car right so i know that particular guy or other target uh, or other car uh, owner uh, using a telematic device inside the car actually so there are different ways to understand what exactly uh, uh, what kind uh, you can do a social engineering as well in that case and uh, i know that i am a smart smart uh, thief so i will use a hack array for other usrp uh, device and uh, anyhow i managed to open the car right and if i uh, steal the entire car so there would be possibility that particular device send the location to the owner right car owner so and he can easily track me right where and he can call to cop and uh, uh, the mess will happen right so what i will do i will steal the car and i will change the uh, i will spoof the entire communication right so let's say uh, uh, we are i'm i'm in the pune right now and uh, i spoof uh, with the help of there are different kind of uh, G, gps sim uh, this is uh, these are the tools freely available gps sdr sim that is simulator so you can simulate the entire uh, uh, you know gps positioning and uh, you can use uh, sorry you can use uh, the hack array and you can see over here i used antenna so i i am it's a omnidirectional antenna you can use directional antenna as well and you can point it to the device device here is like the this device the obd2 device and what happen you know it receives the spoofed gps satellite or other you can say coordinates in that case so and i can change it to the us location so i can easily steal the car and the user uh, you know it's like so uh, you can see, he can see the this his car is in the us actually so let me show you the video it's my video see this shit i'm really sorry about the i'm accessing a lot of stuff it's my place mm. okay okay this is the the video so let's run this video it's a really bad recording uh, you can see it my see it on the uh, uh, the uh, you can see it on uh, my linkedin page as well i posted two days back actually so somebody know don't know what exactly i'm doing so in that case i will uh, use hardware and uh, the antenna is directed towards to the usb2 for device uh, obd2 device and uh, we are actually driving the car uh, in the pune itself and uh, and we spoofed gps signals uh, and it's sending gps signals to particular device and suddenly i'll just show you suddenly the location get change over here so you can see we are into the us now so we are not actually uh, uh, changing any coordinates of the mobile i am changing the coordinates of the device actually so we call it as a hack car hacking in that case but it's a car uh, uh, products right so that affects the u end user right so you can see over here so we are into the us now you can see right so uh, so this is kind of uh, the gps spoofing attacks and uh, let me pull up one uh, bili kind of attacks right uh, 
okay so this is here uh we have uh, the doctor trust uh, uh, uh blood pressure monitoring system in here actually and what we do we uh, you know reverse engineer the entire communication from the device and the mobile and we try uh, we found some uh, the commands get tool commands to start the device right so here uh, just i'll run and i'm interacting with this device and you know the bottom line and the at the bottom of the monitor you will see the doctor test monitoring device it's what exactly it started so what i control that particular bp monitoring device over the ble uh ble device uh, rather you can say csr 4.0 it's a ble adapter and it started so it's nothing but the kind of uh, you know reverse engineering uh, stuff so you can control let's say we have uh, the uh, bele enabled lock uh, in that case so if you know the command how to open the lock actually with the help of the bele so you can intercept and you can easily connect that particular lock and you can send the uh, uh, that particular command get command and uh, you can unlock the lock actually and you can go into you can go inside uh, home so this is kind of uh, uh, tricky thing so it's it's it's, for, it's this uh, poc is for the medical device actually but uh, the, this is how we do uh, some sort of uh, mobile application testing or rather you can say uh, even with the hardware testing with the help of okay so any questions so uh, i don't you can just pop on the main screen so there are multiple okay. images okay okay yeah. okay so yeah hi um, that's it Arun, thank you for uh, this wonderful and a really interesting webinar uh, which you gave. We also have. I'll just add Ankit screen. So we have Ankit with us as well. So uh, he won't be showing his face as easy. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hey Arun. Hey, hi Ankit. Okay, Were you able uh, to look at the screen for questions? I think there was just one question. Yeah, yeah uh, so I'll pop up that question on the screen. So, Arun, can you have a look into the Praneet's uh, question? Okay. So, should I stop my screen or what? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will stop my screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stop. So, uh, yeah. Arun, can you elaborate the methodology to test cloud hosted embedded application related to embedded that is with MQTT protocol? Yes, uh, it's the same like what we do in the cloud testing. So we need to have to have two credentials like uh, one admin and the one normal user. And uh, uh, you need to check the cloud. Let's say you have AWS, you need to check uh, S3 buckets and other stuff if it is publicly available and if you have the uh, the root access on the embedded device in the embedded device itself they configure mqtt publisher right so in that case you have access to the publisher and we can test from their publisher to the directly cloud as well this is the another uh, methodology you can say or other you can say uh, uh the uh, you can you need to intercept the pro mqtt protocols so you need to set up for fake uh, bts or other uh, uh, 4g e node b you can say and that on the e node b fake e node b you need to uh, provide or the fake bts you need to provide internet connection so that device is connected with a fake uh, bts or other you can say the fake e node b 
and over the uh, wire shaft, you, you can intercept the all MQTT protocols or the all MQTT and, uh, the communication itself. So based on that, you can find out the what are the uh, publisher and, uh, uh, and other uh, communication itself with respect to the MQTT protocol, and you can uh, try to access those uh, 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 system as well through the MQTT. There, there is a, there a big big uh, uh, methodology, so you can say that it's a huge uh, testing methodology. But you can you can send me a mail, so I can you know uh, tell you in depth actually how we can. Well, I, I'm showing you the steps as well uh, as well, so how we can go further actually to test MQTT. Okay, thank you, Madam. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Another question by Rahul okay. Sharma asking, what kind of courses you are going to launch in future? Yes, so in the future, in the next month itself, uh, the courses is uh, related to all stuff. What what I do actually in the uh, in my organization, or uh, what I do, uh, preferably do uh, the trainings in the conferences. It's all on the car, then uh, industrial control systems, and then uh, you can say uh, on the IoT, telco products, and everything. So we are going to launch actually ten. Uh, courses which is really from beginner to higher level or intermediate to higher level so you can find it over there soon we are going to publish uh, on the our site actually we are in the we are revamping our website uh, and we are putting our contents over there itself so advanced courses like hardware stuff like fault injection also we are going to do how we can uh, test bootloaders as well in that case so we are going to test and it's uh, due to the covid due to covid so you can expect uh, less amount <laughs> so don't worry about that so we are not charging high actually like uh, other people's uh, charges uh, outside india actually but uh, it's 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 uh, one one thing i would like to say that we are going to uh, targeting students as well uh, if you send us your uh, identity card and everything so we have student program as well so we are going to do a lot of uh, stuff we are, i'm not uh, going to disclose as of now but uh, when the time comes so definitely i will disclose on linkedin and twitter and uh, other stuff just follow me <laughs> let it be a surprise <laughs> yeah absolutely cool cool lots of positive feedbacks already i hope later you'll check it out alone yeah. Sure. So I I hope you you guys like this thing. Uh, yeah, this is really interesting. Like, as in you took really you took pains in setting up everything and all the uh, like all the cameras and all. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to do uh, online sessions, so uh, maybe it's uh, it's it's uh, it's the first time I'm doing actually. It's uh, that's why I'm a little bit nervous whether it's going to work or not, but. Uh, I tried my best, but that yeah, yeah. yeah. This was more of a dry run for you, right? For your Sorry? online web. This was more of a dry run for you for your online webinar. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> you you gave your time to us and uh, in presenting in Nand Delhi, so that is a really nice thing. So yeah. Um, thank you for having me, actually. <laughs> so thank you, Arun. Pleasure to have you, man. Thank you, Arun. Thanks, Arun. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care, Arun. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit. You too. Thank you so, guys yeah. for attending. And that's it. Our end. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, like as Ankit said, thank you for attending this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we will be hosting and we will be coming up with more webinars in the near future. And uh, guys, if you really like the videos and all, please like. As uh, we have been saying it all all the time, share, like, subscribe, and and if you're really interested in having a session and like presenting a session, please reach out to us on a Twitter handle and uh, on the emails. So yeah, that's it from our end. So um, this is me, Pratul, and Ankit signing off. Take care and be safe. Bye bye.